Okay. I'll pan around because we have some new faces in the audience today. So I figured I would pan around and get the new faces in the audience.
Uh, it was very clear that it was inequitable that depending on the, the property wealth of your town or lack thereof and the business wealth or lack thereof, uh, the tax burden is enormous on some communities and um, very light in others. And, you know, some communities have to work twice as hard to raise the same amount of money that a Portsmouth does because of their, their property-rich tax base. Uh, so I think that it's it's just uh, they felt like they needed to take the next step and, and again push it to the forefront and, and see if they could influence it in a positive way. Are there any benefits for a particular school district for sort of I thought it was sort of signing on with them. You're saying if you're saying uh, another district should take sort of the same action that they're taking. I think that that's. I mean, I, I wasn't part of their discussion at their their board level. My guess is they would. They would welcome that. Um, obviously, there's power in numbers. They can more boards that would sign on to something like that. They feel like that would be a positive step. Um, but again, that's up to each individual board. Can there have been others that have joined in on this? I, I think I've heard one or two that have that have um, formally decided to step on. It almost makes you wonder, though, if there haven't been, you know, that many, how much of an argument they think they have. I mean, you would think that others would be, and absolutely, let's, let's join in, you know, strength in numbers. Well, I think it's a, you know, the, the burden is a very different community to community, right. you know, if, 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 again, in, in in Rolinski's presentation, it was pretty apparent that some place like uh, Portsmouth and uh, Moultonboro, um, their tax, all their tax burden is, is much lower than the communities. So, you know, they they probably are not as interested in jumping on board as some of the communities where it's very very difficult to raise raise the tax dollars. And I believe Andrew Rolinski was part of the Claremont though. He, he, he was. He was I believe he was the original attorney that brought suit for Claremont. So he has a lot of background. He has a background. Are there other questions right now? Um, we'll sort of keep going with that further, perhaps. <coughs> Let's do it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all. Um, principles of
So next up on um, our transition plan is to have uh, Principal Workman come over with a couple of former RGS students, hopefully by the end of April or early May, uh, before we get to the thick of things at the end of the year. Um, just you know, be an informational setting for our sixth graders, give our sixth graders a chance to ask the principal some questions, have former students be able to provide feedback to the kids going over their experiences. Um, so it should be a nice little um, extra thing for them to have. And Step Up Day, which is an annual thing, is May 31st this year.
compliments to your staff, to, to all the staff here, and to the Marshall Middle School staff for coming up with these events and uh, um, you know, su supporting everyone in the interaction. We have both schools seem to be supporting the interaction, and that's, and that's wonderful. And you also noted in your um, the, the report that, um, that our, our, uh, our seventh and eighth graders that are currently in Marshwood, um, that, that essentially, Fifty uh, percent of our seventh and eighth graders are partially made with Fiona Hall, and that has, I believe, been true for, for the past few years. And I, I think that that shows that we do a good job here, and that after their sort of after their um, initial adjustment, they, they they adjust and do real, pretty well there. So yeah. and that's really good to hear. It's nice to have it here in black and white. One of my staff members may be aware of it, so I thought you know this is good information for the board to have. I do have one other comment, and it was in your report. It has to do with um, with the new website. I, I love I love going into the new website, and I love the new calendar that's on there. I think that is absolutely fantastic. What I don't see though is a lot of hard information. It's a work in progress. Okay. <laughs> um, we had a discussion with Lori Lane from the SAU. Thank you. 
track, uh, finished, the girls finished fifth in the state. Um, the girls MHS ski team placed sixth at their final tournament, and the boys ski team placed fifth. Um, now here's some records for the winter sports. Um, boy, it goes wins, losses. Boys got six and 12. Girls made it, it to third place this year. They were the class A South third place, and they won 14 games, and they only lost four. So, what sport? Uh, basketball. Basketball. Nice. Thank you. So, I'm going to um, Hockey, they won five and lost 13. Wrestling, they um, placed fourth in the class A South tournament, and they won 14 matches overall, and as a, as a, as a team, and then lost five, which is Um, that's all I have for sports. One other sports related thing that I have is um, I don't know if anybody attended it, but our Interact Club, they have a bunch of different fundraisers for, for certain organizations and foundations that go on throughout the year and everything. And this year, for their spring one, they decided to have a charity softball tournament. It's really cool. They have their own school board. They have a school board built a team, and they all went, and students could make their own team for $5. Marshwood has their own high school quiz show team. So it's a local program. They have different high school teams come in and compete in trivia. And we had our first one on March 4th, and it aired, I believe, March 6th. So if you saw that, but keep your eyes open. Is that here on May?
actually two of the warned articles. The warned articles I meant to, I meant to bring copies so I could actually read them, but I did not. So the two warrant articles that, thank you very much, that had to do with one with um, uh, Article 9, to see if Rollinsford uh, School District shall create a planning committee under the provisions da, 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 uh, to, to study the feasibility of the withdrawal from SAU 56. Um, that passed um, by, by quite a margin. And then the petition warrant article, we know there's been a lot of talk and discussion about the uh, petition warrant article, which was advisory uh, to see if the Rollinswood School Board um, uh, will negotiate a contract to send all sixth grade students effective July 1st this year um, and to pay such tuition as negotiated. So we can have sort of, we're going to get into some of the details of the withdrawal stuff um, as, as we go along, but some of these may overlap. So um, I think. There probably needs to be some clarity for folks about, uh, it's, it, you know, the, the, the petition work article did pass um, to, to advise us to, to look into the feasibility um, of taking this action. Um, where would you all like to start the discussion? Um, well, we could, yeah, we could go either way with that. We have, yeah, so I mean, we, so, so, you mean with the withdrawal part? Mm -hmm. Well, the withdrawal pay is on your, under the business, it is on the agenda. We do have it down below, but there are. Oh, okay, forget it. Um, let's talk about that. Sorry. Okay. The other one is like. Go ahead. So, okay. All right, as far as, as far as the petition warrant article goes, we just a, a, to bring you up to speed with a little bit of the numbers uh, related to that. Um, the tuition would be approximately, and these are round numbers, approximately $212,000 uh, if you add tuition with the number of students that we have. Um, if you, and I'm not suggesting that this is where you end up, yes? Quick question, is that just base tuition? Yes, yes. okay. That's base tuition. That does not include any kind of special education services. Um, and it doesn't include anything to do with transportation. We would have to see if, if we would have to add transportation or whether we could just absorb that, the students onto the existing buses. So we don't have any numbers there. Um, and then we took a, if we look at one teacher and one paraprofessional, um, that would be a staff reduction of $118,000. So just round figures without looking into it too far, not with special education, not with any transportation adjustments. Uh, it would be around $94,000 um, as, a, as a cost. So naturally, it would, it would go up from there with, with transportation and more special education. So um, just to give you some round numbers, and, and none of that is in your budget. Thank you. We're certainly aware of that. The other, the other, so there's a financial piece of it, obviously, um, that we have not budgeted for this year. And, and we, do, we do talk about this pretty much every year around budget time. You know, is, is it time to start looking forward? There's also an educational component that we as a board have not yet felt it was time yet to do that research. Um, we have not heard from experts, we have not heard the pros and cons of sending sixth graders in the middle school or keeping them in a K through six. Uh, there are, we have heard um, arguments from some parents on both sides, but we have not heard from the experts educationally what might be better for each student. And we haven't done that. It may be time, based on this uh, petition warrant article, for us to start doing that research to, to identify some experts and hear from them. I'm not sure did, yeah. where, the, um, the, the, where they were from, but we did read some articles about sixth graders um, being at the top of the class mm -hmm. uh, versus at, at the bottom mm -hmm. of the school and what that did for their self esteem. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I do recall that. Yeah. 
did some mm -hmm. research and we did talk about financials mm -hmm. quite a bit because I think that was kind of, you know, that was made the, the major focus, I suppose, but we were, we were looking at the, yeah, alternatives as well. But yes, it sounds like we should do some more.
end of April or May, you're saying, by the way, you're going to a new school next year. That's that's a pretty abrupt, uh, non-transition way to go about it. So I would favor giving those parents and those kids at least a year notice that, you know, this is your last year here. Well, and I think that it's also just going to dictate, you know, if it ends up happening, I think we may have some changes, perhaps, curriculum-wise, to make that transition. This shouldn't be, you know, all right, kids. I think that we're going. Yeah, our, our, what our, 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 how are we going to prefer the cat? I mean, when we went through this with the seventh grade, this would hurt all kinds of, of you know, feedback. And uh, some positive, some, some negative. Uh, what can we do? What can we do better? We have all kinds of options. But I think that's how we can best you know, posture these kids. We want to make it so that they're safe. This is a this is not the seventh grade. This is the sixth grade. There, there are differences. Yeah. So um, seventh grade, you know you're going to school. Sixth grade, not so much. So. And, and, and I think also that to to remember our 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 sixth graders when they knew they were going there to seventh grade, they were going to go somewhere to seventh grade, and they had three years from the time. Uh, the, uh, the, from the time uh, the withdrawal from the Arab Agreement started, they had three or four years to get ready for the idea, as did the school, to get ready for the idea that we would be moving to another, a different school. And so. admittedly, at our meeting, our delivery session, you know, a few people that were I didn't hear a lot of, there wasn't a lot of constructive, you know, evidence. It was more, you know, uh, how people were feeling at
So the uh, facilities, uh, CIP development. The CIP development is is in its infancy stage. Yes. Uh, we've, we've got a number of things, uh, kind of a low hanging fruit that we put on there. We're still getting some estimates as to uh, some of the projects. Please disregard where they're placed on there. They're just put on there as a marker at this point. Uh, we're also going to be, as soon as we can carve out some time, walking around the building and really looking at every nook and cranny and everything that we need to do to, to get a good idea of any project that might rise above $50,000. Um, so, you know, we're, we're going to be looking at $25,000. We're going to look at those things and, and get this back to you. I just wanted to, uh, this is a format that, that Katie has been working on with the pictures and with detailing it out. It is, you know, provides a lot of detail. Uh, and so this is, like I said, a work in progress. If there's anything particular that, that any board member uh, is thinking about that should be on the list or some, not something for us to look at, please mention that as well. And, and in the next few meetings, we will certainly be coming back to the board. Members. So, yes. I got one. I was just curious about that. My question was more, and this is something I guess you guys can bring back to the kid, is whether or not they can be, uh, whether it can be fixed versus replaced. Mm -hmm. That north, whatever side of this is, um, it's very, you can feel the air coming right through there, especially in okay. I mean, we have meetings in here, and you know, it gets warm over here, it's cold over there, rather than replacing everything. It's just something that can be done. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, so, and, and maybe then this is a question for later. Um, like, I was curious of replace front steps, granite steps. Are we just thinking? I guess that was uh, not not really forecast. For, um, well, the, yeah. Again, don't pay any attention to the year that it was supposed to happen. This is not a finished document. Yet, okay. So. Okay. Uh, but the front steps are, are certainly falling apart and disintegrating and, and, and uh, need some attention. I was, I was going to bring up the possibility of, you, you saw some of the uh, purchases that, that we're anticipating that we can do this year. The budget's in, in good shape. Uh, as we come to the May meeting, you might want to have some discussions on things like the steps that, that we could kind of fast track and get those done as well. Uh, and, and do it immediately to take it right off the seat. Yeah, we, and we've done repairs here at the on those steps, and, and we keep, we're more or less told no, it will last for a while, but the while is pretty short. Yeah, so, the while is over. So it's, yeah, yeah the while is over. Yeah. <coughs> but we really would have to make a decision <laughs> at, the, at the next meeting, uh, the April meeting, on something like that because we'd have to obviously be able to put on a quote and, and, and break ground, if you will, before the end of the school year. So, so it, it would probably make sense to make sure it's in, in this list here. I don't think it is right now. If, if that's something that you're interested in, then we can start doing that right now. Yeah, I just wasn't aware of what's needed. I mean, you, you, your budget's in good shape, so if, if you think that that's something that you want to do, we can get close right now for the next meeting. That way we'll be ready to go immediately. And the next time you see that, I already have all the pictures uploaded, so you can see the front steps on the next version of that. <laughs> we have a little snafu with the pictures being emailed to me, so I got it after the fact. So. The front steps have been... Um, mentioned a number of, a number of times, um, and, and we have had them repaired. So that is Google's in your budget. In your budget. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if, if there are other priorities or... Well, this, oh, 
Well, I think I think it, I think we won't know a whole lot until we get the uh, bid, so we get the uh, until we know what it's going to cost if we want to make it a grand prix or not. Why don't we get a quote for the next meeting and then we'll make a firm decision? Good point. Can I bring something up? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
really go through these lists and see what seems most important to us. Anything further on that, Bob, or anyone else? So just to be clear, the, the, the purchases that we, we've got in your packet, uh, we're planning on moving forward on those. Um, this gives you uh, an opportunity. Next year's budget is um, tight. Uh, and we've got some money for the fiber that's coming up through that, that we've committed to. And this just frees up some money to make sure that we're in good shape to do that. So essentially, so there actually were, are two, two, and I, I actually did, did not look closely enough to see what the difference was between the two. There is a difference. Oh. The bottom line is difference by a couple thousand dollars. Yeah, I was wondering that. Oh, yeah. No, uh, well, uh, uh, oh, I see. you're right. And, and I'm not exactly, I, I didn't look through them closely to see where the difference was. There's $500 in the first one. <laughs> oh, okay. Probably the more expensive one. Because it looked like all the same things were listed. So this just allows us to, to, to get ahead in budget and have a little bit more money to get some things done. So is this something uh, we should take action on uh, this evening or something that we can sort of absorb and take action on next to? Um, we'd like to get going on these things now. That way you'll get a clearer picture of things like the front steps and those things. Uh, your budget, and, and Katie will go over this in a few minutes, you know, you're in good shape right now of about $562,000 um, available. So this will, again, allow us to get ahead on a few things and free up some but, uh, but everything hasn't been spent, everything hasn't been encumbered yet to the end of the year, has it? Has it? Or have we, have we covered all the way out to the end of the year? Well, I mean, there's things that aren't encumbered that we aren't anticipating right, right now. Right, right, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Or, I mean, transportation's encumbered all the way out. Oh, yeah, this is a little closer. Yeah. Everything that oh, okay. can be. Yes. yes, okay. All right, we still have that. Yeah, you're in good shape. It seems that it really hasn't fluctuated much from month to month. It's basically stable. So essentially, um, the, the, the idea that Dr. Johnson is putting forward is that, that some of the, we can get a jump on next year's budget. We can, we can actually start saving. <laughs> next year's budget is tight. Um, by design, we wanted to make it just sort of what we really needed to do, but we can actually save a little money on it by doing some of these things this year. And all of these well, things. All of these things. All, all of these things can be utilized immediately. So it, it's not like we're purchasing things for next year, they can be in and right. utilized now. Yeah. And I, I like seeing that we have the study for the ventilation plants because we know that's a good ticket item and we need to have the study done you know, so that we can start, uh, start working on that. Start working on moving forward with that. That's a pretty, pretty good ticket item. And we'll be concerned about um, the I mean, I am because you haven't got much, but you have that fifty thousand dollars from the public infrastructure funds from last year that came in, so I mean, it, it'll wash itself. But you don't get as much money. Right. So, yeah. so we're looking for a motion to proceed with um, a list of items listed. Or I think we're we looking for a dollar. I think I'm looking just for, I mean, you don't really need a motion to spend that money, but what I'm looking for is just a, a nod of approval or any concerns or any discussion, um, and then we'll move forward. Yeah, I mean, to be clear, I, what, 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 we're, um, what we're agreeing to is that we can spend, you know, about 83, up to $85,000.
particularly all the uh, uh, fiber and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. Looking it's all talked about. <laughs> so is any, anyone uh, not, is anyone not in agreement with moving forward or having them uh,
we contract with cafe services. I believe it is just a one-year contract. Yeah, we renew it every year. Until we pull out for a bit again. Right. Are we happy with our service? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rich, are you happy with the food service? I can't. Honestly, give you my opinion. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't either. Because I'm picky. Have you heard any complaints about our food service? It, it depends on the day. The kids have their favorites. <laughs> All right. You know, some days it's we have that great, house. and other days. <laughs> already been sent, uh, the state also has to approve it, and they've already given it their blessing as well. I, I have a question though, what actually does this contract cover? Does it cover food? Does it cover the service? Everything. It covers everything. They pay the salaries for the people that work, you know, everything that cafe services does. All right. I was just curious, because I, I wasn't, because it didn't seem all that high. Yeah. Well, and you know, we're every small. year we have to put the district pays money in your That's budget. We budget $12,000 yes. to fund the program because it has to make, we can make it whole, so. Your program loses money every year, so your budget. Yes, so so our budget, our budget offsets it. Yes, offsets it. Right. Yeah, it's very interesting. I make a motion that we renew our contract with Fresh Fix Cafe, a cafe services company. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. There was, a, there was a great article on, uh, on, on our food service uh, person yeah, yeah, in, in the student yeah, newspaper. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought that was very good. Yeah. 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 And the least favorite was pulled pork. Pulled pork, yeah. When I was growing up, it was slots. <laughs> <laughs> that was the least favorite. Don't sing the song. Uh, was oh, oh. <laughs> that's okay. I love it. All right. Thank you. Um, all right, so now it's time to talk about, we've now come to the part where we're going to talk about the withdrawal committee, we're going to get an update, and also um, talk a lot more about what we're going with that. So, any, so updates from you, Bob, first, I guess. Well, the update is you warn her in the past, and it's time to form a committee. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. In your packet, I gave you some information about the, the organization and withdrawal, uh, and it, it pretty clearly spells out who needs to be appointed. Uh, we, there are two board members that sit on the committee, uh, and the first board member is responsible, appointed is responsible for setting the first withdrawal committee meeting within 30 days. Yep, and so um, essentially that is our job here tonight is to uh, get two uh, board members who would like to who would uh, like to serve on this committee um, and then and then set set the first meeting. I also think that we also we have to get uh, what what is it four I believe we have to get four community members yeah. um, and one budget committee member have to be have to be named. So I was thinking that as a as a board we should probably put out a little blurb uh, saying that this committee is being formed for community members and ask anyone who's interested to submit an email to whoever becomes named, whoever the first board member is named um, with, their, with their interest, their, their interest in serving. And then, then we as a board can make a final decision um, on our April 11th. Is that? That's fine. You, you'd have to set a meeting soon thereafter. Oh, absolutely. Well, actually, I thought we would set the first. Once someone's so, nominated, we'd set the first meeting tonight, great. and then we can tell people the first meeting is such and such a date. You need to be able to make that as well as Perfect. whatever else. That's mm -hmm. so what I was thinking. What are other, any other thoughts on? Sounds good. Sounds great. All right. Um, as you know, I am interested about certain and serving, even if I had not. Um, Elected to the school board, I was going to, I was going to uh, tell you all I was interested in serving, so I am interested in serving on that committee. Um, is there anyone else who is interested in serving on that committee? We need two of us. We have, uh, we have a volunteer. I was interested. Sure. So, is anyone else? Oh, yeah. 
great. I mean, I'm, I don't miss it, but I'm, I'm afraid I won't work. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, do we need to vote you on to the board? Or? I think, I, I don't. It, it, uh, it says appointed by the school board, so uh, while we appoint, congratulations. Typically, the school board chair appoints. Yeah. So you were self appointed. I'm self appointed.
Good to see you. Good to see you. It's awesome. Um, all right, and, and I simply say that the first meeting will be the first, uh, uh, essentially, in, uh, probably the first, second, or third of May. Do any of those work better for anyone? Because we might as well just set that date right now, right? First, second, third, and second. Any of those is fine. That's a good probably. Okay. I'm happy to send this. I have um, heard from a couple people who, um, who, who knew about, who knew um, that this was going to be happening. They heard about it either at Candidates Night or someplace else. Um, one of them is Shelly Desch, uh, relatively new in town. Her husband was just elected to the Budget Committee. And someone named Shelly Levy, who I don't know. But I'll get back to them saying that we now have this more formal process and to please send, us, send a formal interest letter of email of interest. So anyone I know who, who has expressed interest, I'll get back to it. If any of you know of people who um, have expressed interest, let, let them know. How do we approach the budget committee? Um, I will be, the budget committee is having its first meeting on uh, next Wednesday, and the town administrator who has been left, I see, um, had that asked uh, that, um, uh, that, that I, I, I guess I'll send her an email. Say, and she'll put it on the agenda. Oh, well, great, because there is no uh, budget committee chair in there right now, right? Because they haven't met either. So um, it'll be on the budget committee's agenda then okay. to name someone. Um, to be on it. But then, they, they, then they'll now know when the first meeting is going to be too. Right. That's good. All right. Well, we're a little bit. Inch by inch.
We've got three examples in there. One is a, 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 under Rollinsburg, it's kind of a generic policy, and then you've also got a uh, go right after that, and then you've got uh, a okay. you like numbers, you say? Well, I mean, I don't really see a lot of issue with the Rollinsburg one either. Yeah, I agree. I
and I don't know how big a concern it is. It, it, it's, I, uh, to the rest of the board, it was a concern for me at the time, and so it remained a concern that there may be individuals uh, within, who are operating within the school who are um, who are just making public. There's all you know this GoFundMe page, and you know kids would be really good if you gave me your lunch money right. today to do that, or um, <laughs> talk to your parents into <laughs> doing it. I mean, I'm not saying right. it happened, but right. you know. So I, I, I did have a concern. So Judy, a real example would be the road race in the fall. That's a fundraiser yeah. for the public library. It's a non-school sponsored event, but it's on school grounds yeah. that that event is held. Mm -hmm. so but that, and, but that but falls not, under the building use. Right. Yeah. Which is why I think we put the building use policy oh. in the packet. <laughs> But that falls under building use, and so that, to me, that's covered then. But again, that's, you're talking about something that's not a school sponsored event. It's right. just the use of the building. Your concern is a school sponsored event. I'm not talking, I'm talking, I'm also talking about a non school sponsored event right. that just sort of happens organically within the school. I mean, for instance, if someone wanted to bring in, um, a Girl Scout cookie sign-up sheet, I wouldn't want them going classroom to classroom selling. If they left it in the teacher's room, that's okay, but I would not want them going classroom to classroom selling. For instance, that kind of thing. Class I, I, I would say by definition, anytime we are, are, are publicizing it either internally or externally and utilizing our students, it, it's a school-sponsored event. If the PTA is if the PTA is putting on a, an activity, a fundraising activity, and we are advertising that far and wide throughout our school and through our students, that's a school sponsored event. We're not running it, but we, we for all intents and purposes are, are sponsoring it. Well, I'm in that case, our current one covers it, right? I'm just going to say that I don't really think that we. I, I, I'm just speaking for myself, but it just seems cumbersome for us to start policing every fundraising thing that, that occurs in the school. I think you know, we have administrators who are professional, who know, you know, who will see any of this going on and will say, you know, this is not appropriate, or this may need the, the blessing of the superintendent or the school board, but I just think there are so many different um, shades to this variety. Their own, um, it just it just seems like you know, I don't think is it if it's a big problem, then I say we have to address it. If it's not a big problem, and there's an example that comes up, then I think that it would be brought to our attention if we would address it. That I'm, I'm okay with that. We don't meet often enough that we we would have. You know, we would have to be meeting more often to just to you know to discuss fundraising events, and I don't think that that's really what people want to do. Well, the, the current policy actually says, and the specific con uh, consent of the school board—that's the current policy that we're under. So, in, in, in essence, we, we sort of give blanket um, approval to to the PTO, to the, um, bake sales, to those kinds of. And, that, that's, and that's fine. I'm, uh, and I, I, I do agree. It's a little bit like the First Amendment. Once you start li listing what's okay to say, you, 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 you really um, water down the amendment. You know, I don't, don't want to make it. I don't want to start listing specific things that can or cannot happen. So I mean, I'm, I'm fine leaving it as it is and, and putting our trust in the administrators and, and just sort of uh, as we move along, keeping an eye on things. All right, well, thank you all for the discussion. We are doing nothing with the, oh, with, the, uh, with, the uh, with the fundraising policy. And the next one is the drone policy. We are the drone. If you have told me 10 years ago that you're talking about a drone policy, This is this is back for your second reading. There was there was some some uh, suggestions. You'll see there's a straight through of, of something that we talked about last time. And, uh,
their course, their thinking, their sports. There is nothing for a girl in this school sports watch. Nothing. Parents can't make three thirty appointments all the time, but if they're already at the school, then they can. We lose so many girls to sports and extracurricular activities at the 11 and 12 year old stage because that's when they get really nervous. If there's nothing here to offer them, there's nothing for them to do. So when you ask, what is there to offer? My son would love robotics. My daughter would love the sports. My daughter would love the course. Those are the things this school will offer her or him. So it's not an advisory. This is the one time it got more votes in the budget, it got more votes in the plow truck. So it's not an advisory. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Uh, Lori has 48 staff on the uh, I was. I would like to commend the board for not rushing into this. Um, especially, I agree with Erin, with the current fifth graders all of a sudden pulling the rug out from underneath them and telling them what they have known their entire life being in this building, that it's already believing now. I truly agree with that. And I'm glad you're taking the time to look into all of the details and not just immediately jumping into something. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, board closing uh, comments by the board. All right, thank you all very much for joining us this evening. Uh, we will now 